All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about the reaction mechanism behind a Claisian condensation reaction. So, a Claisian condensation reaction, not to be confused with a Claisian rearrangement reaction, is going to be a reaction in which one takes either two esters or an ester in another carbonyl compound in the presence of a strong base, and that will allow one to form a either a beta keto ester or a beta diketone. So in this case, what does it look like we're using? Well, we have sodium ethoxide as our strong base here that we're using, so that's good. And what is uh, we're gonna what what are our initial compounds? Well, we're using two equivalents of the same compound, so that means we can't be using a uh, an ester in another kind of carbonyl compound. We have to be just using two esters. So in this case, we are using two esters here. We're using ethyl acetate as our Ester, two equivalents of ethyl acetate. So if we don't have two equivalents of ethyl acetate, this reaction will not proceed to products, or at least will not proceed to the products that we want. So we need to have two equivalents of that. So we have our ethyl acetate, two equivalents of it, reacted with sodium ethoxide and then hydronium as our second reagent here. And that's going to form, in this case, we're not going to get a beta diketone. We're going to get a beta keto ester. All right, this guy down here. So we have two carbonyl groups right here. We have that, and then we have our ester over here because we have our oxygen and then our ethyl group. So uh, just a quick note in this, uh, sorry, pause that. In this presentation, whenever we see, just a quick nomenclature thing, whenever we see ET, that's just equaling an ethyl group, which, of course, is just CH2, CH3, connected to some kind of R group or oxygen or what have you. So that's all we're talking about here. It's just easier to write out ET. So, all right, what are the steps in this reaction? Let's look at the beginning. We're going to have our ethyl acetate and our sodium ethoxide right here. But why do we just have the OET? Why do we just have the ethoxide ion written out? Well, because in solution we're going to see that the sodium ethoxide will break up. It will uh, ionize in solution into a sodium plus one ion and an ethoxide minus one ion. And so this is not going to be the reactive part of our sodium ethoxide. Nothing to do with it. Uh, so this is going to be our reactive portion. So that's why we're just writing that here because that's all we need as our reactive portion during this mechanism, during this uh, reaction as we go through the mechanism. So, all right, what's the first step? Well, if you've noticed, I've written out this CH3 group right here. This is just a CH3 group, but I've written one of the hydrogens as uh, distinctly detached. Now, of course, this is exactly the same as the CH3. We could write out CH3 every time like this, but that would just quite a pain, so we don't do that. So, what do we do here? We just have one of the hydrogens written out off to the side because that is where the negative charge from this ethoxide ion is going to attack. Now, why is it going to attack there? Why isn't it going to attack like here at the carbonyl carbon, or why isn't it going to attack over here? Well, if we look at this molecule, we have this oxygen right here which is going to be, you know, cause this to be slightly more electronegative. This entire area over here, this side of the, of the molecule, will have a slight negative dipole. And so on this side of the molecule, we don't have the electron withdrawing effects of these oxygens. So here and here and here. So we'll have a slight positive on this side. So that's why we're going to attack over here on one of these hydrogens. So this negative charge from the ethoxide ion will come over here and attack a hydrogen, and the electrons that are connecting that hydrogen to the CH3, well, they'll just be bumped onto that carbon, and what's that going to give us? Well, that's going to give us a carbanion in this compound. So, we have carbon with its lone pairs here and a negative charge. Two hydrogens attached to the carbonyl carbon, attached to, of course, the unchanged OET. Now, what's the next thing that's going to take place? Well, this is where our second equivalent of the ethyl acetate is going to come into play. So let's go ahead and write out our second equivalent here of our ethyl acetate. All 
All right. Now what's going to happen to this? Well, the negative charge on this CH2 group here is going to want to come and, well, let me get a different color, is going to want to come and attack the carbonyl carbon of our second equivalent of the ethyl acetate. And when that happens, of course, now this would make five bonds to carbon, not okay. So we need to kick some of the electrons from this pi bond here up onto the oxygen. All right, and when we do that, that's going to give our oxygen a negative charge. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Yeah, running out of room here. All right, so in this now on this molecule, what we'll have is actually a combinative compound. Now we've added these two together with a new carbon-carbon bond we've, that we've created. So it'll end up looking like this. We have our methyl group here, our carbon with now the oxygen, of course, We'll have a negative charge as we kicked off those electrons uh, from the pi bond onto the oxygen. We'll have our OET right here. On the other side of the carbon, we'll have a CH2. On the other side of that, we'll have carbonyl and then an OET. Now, where is the carbon-carbon double bond that we just formed? Well, it's right here. This is the same double. This is the bond we created between this guy here and this guy here in this step with this red arrow of the reaction. So now we are stuck with this compound here. Now are we done? Is this compound where we're going to finish the reaction? Well, no, for several reasons. One, this compound is not the beta keto ester that we wanted to get. It's it's you know it's getting there, but it's not that. So that's one reason. And the second reason is look, we've got some we've got charge on the molecule. So who wants that? We don't want that. We want to get rid of that charge. We want to neutralize, electrically have our uh, molecule be electrically neutral. So what do we need to do to make that happen? Well, let's redraw this. Actually, I'll pause this and redraw it so it won't you don't have to watch me. All right, now I've redrawn the molecule. Let's talk about what's going to happen next. Well, we're going to have just some rearrangements within the molecule right now, or some not rearrangements, bad bad wording. We're just going to have some uh, uh, some events taking place within the molecule now. We're not going to worry about uh, any type of solvent or, or other reagent at this at this moment. We're just going to do things in intramolecular fashion. So this negative charge here, and I should not, I drew that incorrectly, this is a sigma bond, not a pi bond. I bad. this negative charge is going to kick back down and reform this carbonyl, reform the pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. But when it does that, of course, what happens? Five bonds, not okay. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to make something a leaving group. What's going to be a good leaving group here? Well, CH3 is like a horrible leaving group, so we can't use that. CH2 is also a horrible leaving group, so we don't want to use that. So what can we use? Well, the OET is looking pretty good to me, so let's go ahead and use that. Let's kick the electrons, bonding it from the carbon straight onto that, and that will cause it to leave. And then let's redraw what we have. What do we have now? Well, we've got CH3. We have our reformed carbonyl. CH2, carbonyl. OET, and now look, things are electrically neutral. We're happy in that department. But don't forget, we also have an ethoxide. And I, well, I'll, I'll draw it like we've been drawing it. We'll just say ODT with a negative charge on it. In addition, because look what happened here. That's where that came from. So, next step, what are we going to do? Well, the ethoxide here is actually going to attack one of the hydrogens in this molecule, and it's going to be one of these guys right here. So let's do this. Let's rewrite this portion of the molecule like this, CH, and then we'll put that H there to see what we're going to attack. Well, this guy is going to come in and attack that hydrogen right here. And then, of course, what happens? Well, these electrons go back onto that carbon, and what are we going to get? Well, yep, yeah, we're going to get another carbon ion. So, this proceeds to the products that I'll draw on the next page. 
So here we have this guy, and our carbanion is, of course, right here now. And what are we going to do? Well, we have something else in solution, too, at this point. Don't forget, what was our second reagent that we used? Well, yes, hydronium. So what's hydronium going to be capable of here if we have a negative charge on this carbon? Well, how about we protonate that carbon? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So we'll take our hydronium. I can write that charge better. Oh, yeah. All right, we have our hydronium and red pen. The hydronium hydrogen is going to be attacked by this guy. These electrons will go here, which will form a what? Water. And then the next product that we have after this will look something like this. CH3, carbonyl carbon. CH2, another carbonyl carbon, and of course the OET. Now, what does this look like here? Well, I'm pretty sure that that is the beta keto ester that we wanted to get to begin with, and yes, it is, it is. So now, why is it a beta keto ester? Why, why are we calling it a beta keto ester? Well, let's look at this real quick. This isn't that bad. So here is the ester portion of this molecule, and you know we have a ketone here. So why do we call it beta keto ester? Well, this guy, the ester carbon here, the carbon directly connected to the carbon participating in the ester is going to be the alpha carbon. Well, if I could write alpha right here. So this guy is our alpha carbon. So what's our beta carbon? This guy. So here's our beta carbon. It's a beta keto ester because it's an ester. And on the beta carbon, we have a ketone. So quick recap of what happened during this Claisian condensation. We had two equivalents of ethyl acetate, which we reacted with sodium ethoxide and hydronium to form a beta keto ester. So we took two esters and formed a beta keto ester. The first step of this was we took our OET minus and attacked one of the CH3 hydrogens on our original molecule, the ethyl acetate. That caused a carbanion to be formed, so which we needed to uh, let that charge attack the partial positive dipole that we found down here on this carbon, because any carbonyl, of course, you know. And it attacked there. We kicked some of these electrons back up onto the oxygen, created a sigma bond there and a negative charge on our oxygen. That negative charge wanted to move back down and reform the, uh, the pi bond. Of course, we've added the OET here. Well, that let this OET be a good leaving group, OET left. And so we had OET minus, thanks to these extra electrons right here, we had OET minus in solution. OET minus then reacted with one of the hydrogens in this central hydrogen here, the hydrogen in between the two carbonyls. That kicked those electrons back onto this carbon, causing another carbon ion to form. That carbon ion's negative charge attacked one of the hydrogens in hydronium, which we had as our second reagent here. And that caused us to, of course, and I should have written this out, have our beta keto ester and water be formed. So we are done, and that is the complete reaction mechanism for this simple and sample Claisian condensation.